Hey guys, I had a question from a friend who wanted to know why it's so important to keep the numbers down for COVID. And I have a story that directly relates to it, believe you me, really quick. Um, a friend of mine had been wondering why there weren't, uh, were there only so many beds in the Houston area for the, uh, the ICU unit. And there's only like, I think there were about 20 beds in the ICU unit for one of the Houston hospitals. He's like, he thought that there would be hundreds of ICU beds. Uh, and I had kind of raised my fingertips metaphorically and said, there are only so many ICU beds in a hospital and in Houston might have several hospitals, but that's still not in eh, probably under a hundred ICU beds, very much under hundred ICU beds, I would bet. And the reason why is because there's only so many ICU beds. It costs a lot of money to keep everyone going. So they only, I don't know how they programmatically or financially work out that they have enough ICU beds to meet the need, but no more because it costs so much to have an empty ICU bed. It's, it's not worth it. And my direct experience, I can tell you from this is when I had my open heart surgery and hi, if you don't know, I had open heart surgery. Open heart surgery is something that requires several days in the ICU afterwards. You go in, you have your five to six hour surgery. In my case, it was to replace an aortic valve. And afterwards, you get to go right into the ICU. And they care for you. It's, uh, it's basically where they take um, your breathing tube out, where they, where they uh, make sure that you're all set and can breathe on your own again and um, you go through a whole bunch of stuff, you're still connected with tubes and electronics. I mean, for, for me, it was into my heart, uh, drainage tubes to my heart and, and electronics into my heart. And that's where I stayed for three days. And it wasn't an elective surgery. My heart was failing, my valve was failing. The, <laughs> the doctor that I had, uh, the doctor that I had talked to said, you have, two choices, I'll give you two choices. You can have your surgery either before Christmas or after Christmas, that was it. Otherwise my heart would fail, I would be no more and I wouldn't be talking with you now. And I had my open heart surgery, uh, I elected to have it before Christmas, I said let's just get it over with. So it was before Christmas I had the open heart surgery and I got to recover over the holiday season uh, because it was something that was, I wanted to get it done before all of the people with seniority, all the people that knew a lot about open heart surgery and how to care for people and whatnot. <laughs> Selfishly, I wanted them to be still working and not going away for their ho uh, end of December holiday. So I had it beforehand. Luckily, I had it beforehand. If I scheduled it for afterwards, I don't know what would have happened. It, I'm hearing from all these different groups pages that I'm on that they postponed all elective surgeries so to free up the ICU and to free up people for COVID. Now, COVID is important. Uh, heart failure, that's not an elective surgery to, to correct heart failure, but it was classified as elective surgery because they wanted to free up the beds with with COVID patients. And I understand that COVID is very important, but if you're dying and your heart is giving out, it's not elective surgery. And there are a few people on some of the pages that I had been on that actually died because they were waiting for open heart surgery. Long story short, there aren't enough beds and there are not hundreds of beds in each hospital. It's the ICU is usually only a few beds probably 10 beds to a hospital. I'm in the Boston area. And so I, I, I wouldn't imagine that there would be more than a dozen ICU beds per hospital, uh, maybe 20 if I'm stretching my imagination. We do have a lot of hospitals here in the Boston area, but still that's not hundreds and hundreds of ICU beds and hundreds of ventilators and hundreds of breathing tubes and hundreds of, um, uh, you know, heart, you know, blood circulation machines. And that's, those are the things I had to be on. I had to be on the blood circulation machine while they were doing the operation. I had to be ventilated when I was 
during the operation. Um, and so, yeah, there's not a lot of places. Um, the, the, the capacity to take COVID patients, what I'm trying to say, is very low. Capacity is very low. And it doesn't take a lot of COVID patients to overwhelm the system. And that's what we're fighting against. We're not fighting against, oh, I get it, and you all get over it, I'll go on a ventilator. It's that whole entire system. Dog quake. Dog quake. And it keeps going. Are you okay? All right. So, so anyways, that's what we're fighting against. That's what we're keeping the numbers way low so that we can keep people alive that uh, both need open heart surgery and ICU afterwards. Because those ICU patients, you can't just put them on another floor. They, they're there for a reason. Nobody wants to be the ICU, I promise. Everybody wants to be out. But they keep those number of ICU beds because that's the number of people that usually go through the ICU. You can have it as a sine wave. One, one goes out, one goes in to the ICU. One goes out, one goes in. And they try to keep that nice sine wave to keep everybody alive. And then you have COVID on top of it, it gets really messy really fast. So anyways, there's my layman's terms for why we need to keep the, uh, the numbers low. And I hope it helps you. And uh, I'm glad I'm alive. And thank you guys for listening to my, it's not a rant, but uh, a little bit more knowledge than uh, a little bit more knowledge than before. Okay, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.